Okay, YouTube. Shea Bear 1000 here. Today we are going to be. I'm going to be showing you. It's going to be kind of like a vlog um, slash flea market find video. Although these items were not found at a flea market per se, uh, we found these alongside the road. Okay. Now it was kind of like off of a state route and like a side street that was a county road so it was kind of out a little ways um but these were sitting there with a with some other stuff like some mattresses and some other things i didn't pick up uh it looks like somebody was trying to sell this stuff and i uh, just didn't want to take it home so we were going past and i happened to look up and see the stuff i was looking at the stuff and i seen a sign I didn't didn't know what it said and monkey said free for all I said what or all free or something like that and I said what and she said that sign said all free or you know so she goes you want to look at it and I well hell yeah so we turned around went back and I saw these chairs and these two little bicycles here so but the reason why I'm thinking they were trying to sell this stuff and just didn't want to take it home, like Monkey said, they got prices on these, and I don't know why they wouldn't have sold, but they got the chairs, four chairs, four dollars. They got a price tag on this bike bicycle of um, three dollars, and they've got one on this bicycle of four dollars. Now... These chairs are in pretty good shape. Now these, um, these uh, of course, are wood with the wooden legs, but the inlay is plastic, right? So, but they're in decent shape. And I set this one out here. This is the worst one. It's got a stain on it. Looks like maybe chocolate or something. Uh, but the rest of them, I don't know if this camera's picking it up, but the rest of them look fine, okay? I mean, they could use a little cleaning, but... I got them to try to resell cheap for somebody that may may be able to use them. Now, on this one, they got these things on the bottom. I'm not sure what that's all about, but I don't know. It's the only one that has them. I figure there's little, uh, there's little tabs on the bottom, like those felt tips might have come off, and that's all they had. I don't know. Uh, but they're in decent shape, so... This one's got a little crack right here on it. But I figure, you know, I'll clean them up and, and sell them. Uh, now these bicycles, they're in decent shape. This one the chain's off of, but they all the tires are flat. So what we're going to do today is we're going to shoot some air in these... Well, that one's not flat. But this one is. We're going to shoot some air in these tires and see... See if they'll hold air, and if they don't, if I'll be able to patch them. Because I'm not going to buy tubes for these bicycles for free when I'm only going to, you know, ask like five and ten bucks for them. So, you know, it just does, it wouldn't pay me to go ahead and, and put new tubes in them. But uh, this one, I think, I don't think those are the original wheels for it. They just don't match the bike, you know. I would think maybe the wheels would have been white. See how that one's like red white and blue and this one's you know kind of like a like a greenish white it's faded they've been sitting out for a while it looks like maybe but uh but i'm gonna go ahead and get you up in the stand and uh we're gonna shoot some air in these tires and see if they hold air so we know that back one's already got some air in it so let's go ahead and do that and uh we'll check them over real good and See what they're worth. Okay, guys. Got to looking at this one. Some bad news on the front one. The front tire does not have a tube in it. So, uh, I'm going to have to find a cheap tube somewhere. Because I'm not going to put any money in something like that. I mean, it was free and I'm, you know, it's not like it's a $30 or $40 bicycle. You know, I'm going to put 10 bucks on it. So, I don't want to spend $5.00 for a tube and uh you know put ten dollars on it and have somebody talk me down to five i'm kind of wasting my time doing that so 
Uh, but the back one, I believe you inflate these to 40 pound. Where is it? Yeah, right there, 40 PSI. Now they are a little dry cracked, but since there's a tube in there, I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, it's not a 30, 40, even a $50 bike, you know, it's not even a $20 bike. Um, it's just going to be for, you know, a kid to, to enjoy or whatnot. Uh, but what's interesting, I don't know if the camera, yeah, that is a Honda tire, not a Honda, a Honda tire. I've never heard of them. So, it's a BD brand. <laughs> so, I thought it said Honda at first. So, let's shoot a little air in here and see if we can hear any uh, leaks. I don't hear any leaks. Okay, guys, I couldn't find my tire pressure gauge. I don't know what happened to it, but this thing seems to be holding air. I don't hear any leaks. So, looks like the back wheel's loose over there. Well, the whole back wheel's loose. So let's let's uh, let's go ahead and get it flipped up side down, and uh, let's check this thing out real good. So what we got here back wheels loose so let's try to put this chain on I mean who knows why people do things right so I mean there's a reason for it um, the crank is loose we're going to get it tightened up and I actually may put some grease in that crank so Yeah, so we need to adjust all that stuff. Brake works. And we'll adjust this back wheel. And how you do that, if you guys don't know, but I'm sure 90% of you do, these nuts right here, see that one's just finger tight. You just loosen them, pull this back until the chain's to your desired, uh, yeah, tenderness. Uh, to your de desired tension make sure the wheel's straight so the chain don't come off and so it don't track funny and that's all you do with that that's what we're going to do but i got to get it a little higher up so this will spin for me and this is the crank just a single piece crank um, it is loose okay. so what we're going to do first before we adjust the back wheel uh, I want to take this crank out. You got to be careful. There's little ball bearings in here. We're going to take uh, this pedal off right here. We're going to take this crank out. And I'm going to put some grease in there. And uh, I got to get in some shade, guys. And I'll get you resituated. Uh, maybe I'll put you in the garage for this. And, uh, and we'll grease the crank and put a little bit of oil on that chain. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, guys, I got us in the shade a little better. Now, the first thing we want to do before we take this crank out is we want to take this pedal off. Now, these pedals have left handed threads, so that means you're going to turn it backwards to loosen it. So, <clears throat> now sometimes these can be a real pain in the ass but this one wasn't too bad all right now why that crank would be that loose i don't know because it's a left-handed thread as well so that way when you're pedaling it if anything it'll tighten it now why that would be loose i don't know i don't know if it just happened to come loose or what but built a lot of bicycles when i was a kid you know mom and dad didn't have you know much money and uh hell i didn't know we were poor you know so we just uh built our own bicycles there's the washer it's got a little a little tab right here that way you can't get it mixed up 
and there's a slot in here where that goes. Now it's also got another little deal right here that unscrews out. This is called your inner race. Now hopefully the cage is still around. You guys can't see shit. Why didn't you say something? The cage is still around these bearings. Yeah, I think it is. So that's cool. And it just comes off. Now you're going to take this. Let's take this bearing out. See, a lot of times, like when we was a kid, it didn't have this cage around the ball bearing. See the balls? And you, we would just put grease on a bunch of ball bearings, whatever we had laying around, and just stick inside there, and they would stay, and you'd hopefully they stayed until you got your nut on. But this one seems to be okay. There's a little bit of grease in there, but not much. So now let's go ahead and get this out, just like that. See that? Let me back you out a little bit. Let's see just pulls out like that see it'll come out pulled out like that and there's the other bearing so it looks pretty good cage looks good the races look good I'm gonna wipe these out real good and I'm gonna uh, put some grease in there just with my finger and then I'm gonna put the bearings back in self-explanatory so I'm gonna clean these up as well too so okay I've got some grease in there I got the bearing in on this side I've got it greased and I'm using this high temperature axle grease, bearing grease. That way when a kid gets going 100 miles an hour, it won't fail on them. Put that in there like that. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of grease. All I'm doing is kind of dipping it in the grease, smearing it around. You don't want to pack it. When we was kids we used to think that whole thing had to be packed. and one day my dad came home and says, what are you doing? I'm packing my bearings. See, you don't pack them bearings, son. They're ball bearings. <laughs> okay, Dad. How do you do it? He said, it just takes enough. Because all that grease inside there is not doing anything. And he had a valid point. So my dad taught me a lot when I was a kid. Now, this is going to spin backwards, remember? So... Let me get this grease off my fingers. Then we'll get it all cleaned up. Now they make a tool for this thing here. It's got two slots on it. One on each side. They make a tool for these. I never had one. I'll show you how I tighten it because like I said, it don't have to be super duper tight. And uh, hopefully you guys can see that. I just use a flathead screwdriver on these. Hopefully these threads ain't stripped and they don't feel like it. So all right. pretty good there. Now I'm going to take my screwdriver and a little wrench and I'm just going to tap on that. See it spinning around there? Alright. Feels pretty good. Now we're going to put our washer back on. Remember that slot I showed you? Or that tab sticking out it goes in that slot right there and this is just called a jam nut all that does is keep that major or the major yeah the main nut tight from loosening up so we're gonna put this on there now this one you want to snug up a fair good amount but nothing can actually come flying off of it but it can come apart on you Little 
snug, but it, it, it'll be fine, I think. So, let's get our pedal back on. And remember, this one's backwards. And just give it a good tug on it there. Now let's get this chain put on here. And I'll show you how to adjust it next. Okay, hopefully you guys can see us okay. So, we're going to just put this around here. Put it around the sprocket. wheel's got a little bend to it, but nothing I'm concerned about, because this is not a stump bike. I'll just pull it back until that goes tight. Just got to be snug. If your chain keeps flying off on you when it's snug like that, then there's, there's another problem, so... The final check on the brakes. All right, they work. Now, I just got a little transmission fluid here. I got regular oil over there, but this is another thing. They don't have to be super, super wet with oil, okay? They just need to be kind of, don't even have to be really saturated, saturated, but because, and especially don't grease them. If you grease them, dirt will get on these chains and, and that's what ruins them is too much dirt on them and it eats your chains up also uh, if you don't have them I know it's kind of messy they make chain lube but I don't like it stuff like I say it's too greasy it, and if you don't have them adjusted right if they're too tight that'll wear them out if they're too loose that'll wear them out a lot of times what you may want to do, like if it's for, if your kid's around or whatever, or it's your bike, you know, get it on there, see how it feels, take it for a ride. Because these chains, even though they're steel, they're metal, yeah, I understand that, but they still will stretch. Uh, the back tire is still holding there. It's a shame about no tube in the front. Nice, nice. So I'm just putting a few drops on. It'll work itself in there. And that's all you need. Now, take your... Take your rag. Kind of hold it on the chain. Pedal it. And take your excess excess off. So that bike, if it had a, uh, so if this bicycle, if it had a, a front tube, this would be ready to go. So I'm not real worried about that bent wheel. So let's bring the little one over here. I shot some air in that front tire. They're holding air. So I think all I'm going to do with it is oil the chain up. Yeah, this one's in pretty decent shape, so I think all we're going to do is oil the chain up a little bit. And we're going to maybe wipe it down some, I don't know. Like I say, it's not, you know, a $30, $40 bike that, you know, if they want to clean it, they can, but... Alright, so those brakes work. Does not have front brakes. But it's got... It's got brakes to where you, when you spin the pedal backwards it stops or it's also got 
handbrakes on on the back. So yeah, we'll just give it a quick wipe down here. I may adjust that chain a little bit, but that's what we're going to do with that one. Just going to give it a quick wipe down, throw it out in front for sale. It's ready for a kid. Okay, guys. So that's, uh, that's just the maintenance on the bicycles. I need to get a tube for the bigger bike. I think it's a 20-inch. And uh, But I also noticed something else that I don't like, the way they've got this... Uh, this front brake cable spun around like that. I don't like that. Anyway, I'll get that spinning around because I'm going to have to take that front wheel off anyway. And I'll get the brake adjusted and that thing will be ready to go. As soon as I find me a tube somewhere, I might find, you know, a free bicycle somewhere. Another one that's junk but has a good tube. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm not putting any, any money into them. You know, I just want to get something cheap for a little kid to enjoy. So... That one there is ready to go. It's going out front. I'm going to go sit in front of the fan for a minute. Pretty hot out here. I think it's 90 degrees. So, alright guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you enjoyed the vlog and, you know, how to maintain your bicycle. Monkey's got a bicycle around back. Uh, I may dig it out. If you want, let me know in the comments below. We'll do something with it. I thought about putting a little motor on it, but I don't want to put $100 in... A bicycle motor and do all that work and sell it for a hundred bucks you know what I mean then I'm not paid for my time so but I think she she was talking about donating it or selling it but we'll get it out if you want and uh, we'll check the uh, we'll check the tubes and uh, we'll get it all greased up oiled up and uh, whatever it needs so let me know in the comments below if you want me to share that with you um, actually I'm probably going to anyway so <laughs> Because, you know, when I'm here by myself, I get bored and I like talking to you guys. So, listen, guys. Now, I'm going to say Shea Bear 1000, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. Hope you guys have a good weekend coming up. And uh, I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks again, guys. And I'll see you soon. You guys didn't think I was going to let you go that easy, did you? Let's take a little ride. First crank every time.
now we're gone. Bye-bye, guys.